This is KGW News at Noon. In our top story now at noon, three Portland police officers are on leave after shooting and killing a man yesterday afternoon near Mall 205. Thank you for joining us here at KGW News at Noon. I'm Christine Pitawanich. While police say the man was armed, as Alma McCarty reports, there are still questions around the circumstances that led to police opening fire. Around 3.30 Wednesday afternoon, officers from East Precinct responded to a call about a man they say was trying to steal from the Target store at Mall 205, a suspect they say that had a record. The information that was broadcast uh, over the radio was that the suspect uh, had a warrant and uh, was a suspect in a previously reported robbery case. And that meant additional officers, including those with the Focus Intervention Team, which focuses on gun violence, also responded. When the officers arrived, uh, they saw the suspect leaving the store uh, and attempted to arrest the suspect. Um, the suspect ran away from officers and uh, at a location just west of the parking lot uh, for Mall 205, there was a confrontation between the suspect and officers. Um, three officers uh, fired their weapons uh, and the suspect uh, was injured. The exact details of that confrontation still uncertain. After officers uh, approached the suspect, um, uh, they determined not only that he was deceased, but they found a, a firearm next to him. Also unclear whether the man drew his weapon or fired shots or if the officers involved knew the suspect had a gun when they fired. The reason that we don't specifically say is because we are still early in our investigative process. Investigators spent hours collecting evidence. The crime scene stretching from the mall parking lot to southeast 96th for nearly six hours. It's not lost on me that these events, you know, take a toll. Police Chief Bob Day, who responded responded to the scene, told reporters he could feel the weight of the news. It's been a tough week for the city, tough week for the police bureau, tough week for our community. Certainly those most significantly impacted as we're reminded of the fragility of life. Alma McCarty, KGW News. We have a reporter working to find out more information on the suspect and the events that led up to the shooting. Stay with KGW for more developments both on air and in our 4 o'clock newscast as well as online at KGW.com. Portland police are hoping you might be able to help solve a deadly shooting in southeast Portland earlier this month. Around 2 p.m. on December 6th, police say someone shot and killed 49-year-old Michael Hart near southeast Main Street and southeast Water Avenue in the Buckman neighborhood. Officials say Hart, who also went by Nomad, had been camping in a tent. Investigators say the person connected to this trailer may also have information. That trailer was moved shortly after the shooting. Call Portland Police if you know anything. And officers have arrested the man suspected of stabbing and killing another man at a Southwest Portland Max stop on Christmas Eve. Investigators say around 630 Sunday night, 23 year old Juan Francisco Oriana Gavrete got into a fight and was stabbed on or around the Providence Park station platform. Officers found him on the Max train at the Goose Hollow stop. He died at the hospital. Police arrested 22-year-old Edil Cruz Aragon in southwest Portland on Tuesday and charged him with second-degree murder. Now to some icy weather that hit the east side of the Cascades earlier this week. Take a look. Several emergency vehicles were pulled over in icy conditions to help a car that slid off Highway 20 near Subtle Lake in Central Oregon Tuesday. That's when you can see here again a commercial truck slid into the back of an Oregon State Police cruiser, then hit an ambulance. A patient and three medics were inside. Fortunately, no one was hurt. The truck driver was cited for careless driving. Glad everyone was okay. Chris, I know we had icy conditions there earlier in the week. It got kind of windy and now, I mean, just all December, it's been pretty warm. It's been, it has been warm. That is true. We'll look at those uh, numbers coming up in just a few minutes. Something else I wanted to show you and thank you for director uh, Brian Matthews for saying, hey, check out the Lincoln City Sky Camera because yes, the tide is in. It's actually high tide in about 10 minutes or so in Lincoln City and you can see a frothy Pacific. We've got the sneaker wave warning, of course, along the North uh, Oregon coast here. This is the live look from Cannon Beach. The waves are up. The tide pools at Cannon Beach at Haystack Rock are certainly underwater at this point. All right. 
Uh, we do have a little water falling out there in some locations. This is a live scan from radar showing some sprinkles on the map down towards Salem. We had a pretty good band of showers pass right through Washington County a few minutes ago, and now we've got some showers through Clackamas County and at Eastern Multnomah County, primarily up in the Cascade Foothills. Snow levels today up around 5,500 feet, so there may be some snowflakes flying. There are some snowflakes flying at Timberline right now. All right, here's radar over the last three hours. Again, there's that band of showers that rolled right on through uh, Polk and Marion County and right up through the heart of uh, Yamhill and Washington County about an hour ago, now lifting northward into Cowlitz County and sort of fizzling as it does so. Uh, the live look from our Wells Fargo sky camera shows mostly cloudy conditions out there right now. 48 at the airport, 48 in Aurora, 55 in Tillamook, so a mild day west of the Cascades. A reminder, normal high this time of year is about 46, so we're already above that, and I think we eventually get to about 50, maybe 52 today under a mostly cloudy sky. All right, Christine, the wind probably picks up a little bit tonight. I don't think it'll be as strong as it was yesterday, but look for some gusty east wind, maybe a slight chance of rain going into early Friday as well. We'll look at that and detail your New Year's Eve and New Year's Day forecast. Yes, we're looking forward to the weekend already. Uh, that's coming up in just a few minutes. Chris. Homelessness, addiction, and mental health remain among the top challenges and priorities for Oregon lawmakers. And starting New Year's Day, a handful of new laws focused on those issues are set to go into effect. Blair Best has the details. One doesn't have to look hard to see the issues that mean the most to Oregon voters, especially here in Portland. It's a humanitarian crisis to have people living on the streets. I've been coming here since 91 and I, I just see how it's exploded. We need to be looking at this as an emergency. State lawmakers like a Democratic representative Rob Nose hears them loud and clear. It is not a surprise to me that all that voters are asking the legislature to do something to ameliorate housing and homelessness, to do something more about addiction. He's behind a bill taking effect January 1st that changes parts of ballot measure 110. That's the controversial law that decriminalized certain amounts of hard drugs. He says there won't be any immediate changes around enforcement. Instead, this bill creates a group to oversee the money that's being put toward new addiction services. What voters are hopefully going to see starting sort of right now is more treatment, more housing, more opportunity for detox. Another law that starts next week makes it so those types of addiction services are available to inmates as well. The only time that adults in custody can get access to uh, drug therapy is just before they're released. And that is really kind of crazy. Senate Bill 529 makes it so treatment is an option starting the first day of their sentence. Substance use disorder is a chronic illness that needs to be treated as soon as possible. But perhaps the most anticipated bill to take effect next year? The bill is House Bill 2984. It allows local governments to convert commercial buildings into affordable housing without requiring a zone change. What we're trying to do with these commercial conversions is prompt all of us to think differently about how we do housing and how we can do it more quickly. I think it's a waste of time and energy to have all these huge buildings and all these people that need a home. Anything that brings more people downtown just helps the whole environment. Now, there are many other laws set to take effect next week, including one that requires hospitals to hand out Narcan to patients who are there for treatment. Now, come the February session, another focus for lawmakers is whether or not to make public drug use a crime again, essentially reversing the most controversial piece of Measure 110. Blair Best, KGW News.